Hey everyone. So I was asked during the, my recent stream earlier today at the Road Atlanta race for the I, no, Indy Pro 2000 PM18 um, to do a track guide for how I do my race and what kind of setup I use. And I actually just run the default setup on iRacing. They give you different setups for high downforce, low downforce, and medium downforce. I run the low downforce setup at the Road Atlanta race, and then I actually just knock up uh, the, the wings to keep the balance just right for what I want. I think I got A2 and A4 for front and rear. And that's the only adjustment I've done to the base setup, which is the low downforce. And it's been fairly, um, I, I would say, high performing. Um, I've been near the front runners. I've been running the low uh, one minute fifteens to up to low minute one sixteens if I if I'm in traffic or, or passing or if I screw up. So uh, my optimal gets down to one fourteen nine hundreds. So uh, I think it's a competitive setup. Um, I think I just need a little bit more consistency and skill for me, like to, to actually reach my optimal. Um, so I don't think it's the setup's fault. Um, my, my advice, I think, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying this isn't like, I'm the fastest guy out there. There's somebody who's doing 114. So I don't know what he's doing, um, like 114 flat. So I, I don't know how he does it, but anyway, my advice is to just practice the lap until you get it right, until you absolutely cannot get more time out of the car, then you start working on setup because it's so hard to deal with. Is it the setup that's not giving me the right uh, right time or is it my skill that's not getting it the right time? So um, for me, I worked on um, a downforce set or low downforce setup and I just keep getting better and better time. I still haven't really found the point where I can't get more time out of the car because it seems like every race I run, I find a little bit more time. And that tells me that the time's in here, not the car, right? So um, let me show you how I run through this lap and I'll start off with the cockpit view. Um, this is the last turn coming into the home straight. So obviously flat out in the last turn and in here I break right when I hit the, ga uh, the grass. So let me rewind here and actually show you the controls. So I come down here. And as soon as I get to where this grass is, I hit the brakes um, until I can downshift twice from gear six and gear four. And then I actually let the car slide until I can hit that apex because I want to make sure that my car is finished turning before I really start hitting the gas. Because if I don't, I'll end up on the far left of the racetrack as soon as I'm done. I don't want that. There's a quick left-hander almost immediately after. So we want to stay on the right-hand side if we can. So I stay on the right here and then I come in into the left. And this is actually really tricky because, pardon me for pausing again, but this is actually really tricky because this is a blind left-hander. Left and over time, you just need to get a feel for how, when you need to turn. I honestly don't have any markers. Um, I try looking at the trees, but you know, sometimes it doesn't really, you don't really get it right because it's so far off in distance. If you're in a different angle, if the car's there, then you're screwed. So you really just got to practice and nail that blind corner. But what you really want to do is to be able to turn up until you get into a, you, you finish your turning so that you are in a straight line by the time you reach this uh, line right here this horizontal line. I don't know if you can see it. Let me back up. A, let me go before now uh, a couple frames. This horizontal line here is where you want to be. Uh, absolutely. Your car needs to be straight by then. It's, it needs to finish turning left. I, I have very slight turning uh, steering lock here. As you can tell, I'm starting to apply the brakes and I apply the brakes pretty hard and I knock down another couple shifts. So remember, for turn one, two shifts down, and then I upshift once again, and then downshift twice here. So I, th I think by the time I finish downshifting, I'm in gear three, as you can tell. So this is actually really tricky. How I do it is I actually 
I, I finish all my breaking before I even see the corner of this blind right. And then as soon as I slow down enough and get the car turned in before I even see the corner, you notice in here, I'm already angled at this corner. It looks like I'm gonna cut the corner, but because my car's momentum is still going forward, I won't cut the corner. And I actually start hitting the gas now. I notice that's where I gain a lot of time compared to many other people. Um, and I get just, like I'm full throttle by the time I'm here. Right. So to give you uh, a comparison of a guy I just passed, this guy, we'll use him as a test dummy, but he, you notice he breaks, notice this, he breaks and then he waits until he finishes his turn and then he hits the gas. Let's listen for it. Break, break, neutral, 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 gas. By, by the time he's here, just starting to hit the gas, I'm full throttle already. Like it's, he's at 97 in miles per hour exiting the corner. Where am I? I'm at 104 at the same point, right? And already rapidly increasing because I'm at full throttle. So if I even skip ahead a little bit, I'm, at, I'm almost full, 10, 10 miles per hour faster exiting the corner. That's huge. So uh, my trick here is to finish my braking early and then turn the car in, get on the gas before you even hit the corner. Um, the only problem is you do get a little crazy. Um, you, you get some crazies who hit the gas, I mean, uh, hit the brakes really late and you get run in the back because they don't take the corner the same way you do. So if you have someone following you, maybe take it normally, uh, take it like, you know, a little bit more conservative, maybe break lighter earlier. Um, yeah, but anyway, you go through these uh, S's pretty much flat. And then as soon as you uh, get to the bottom of the S's, you, you see the curves, you break and you can go in here. Um, do I need to talk about that a little bit? Let's, let's do that. Because in fact, uh, let's talk about the S's. Do you notice in here, I'm full gas and then I shift. And then I shift here. I purposely shift right when I turn in because when you shift, there's a slight cut of power. That's like lifting. And what does lifting do? Shift weights forward for you to grip better. So I shift as I'm turning for this turn. So I turn in a little better and I keep, keep my foot flat. I don't lift. And then as soon as I see this curb here, I break. And you can take as much curb as you want through here, but I honestly advise you don't because it's slippery. And then I try to break in between the two lines. I don't know if you can see the two lines. Let me change the angle. These two lines right here. So the first two, not, not those ones. And then what's interesting is that when you break, I break hard and then I slowly trail break. I, I slowly let go of the brake just as I'm starting to get on the gas so that I can actually ride that momentum so that um, using the gas to continue to help me steer because the rear tires are obviously trying to keep going forward. And the, you notice I cheat a little bit on the curb here I don't get an off track here for doing this because the center of my car is still very much on the track, but I use the right wheel and I cut the grass a little bit to, to smooth the angle of the turn. But more importantly, um, I find that it helps me rotate that much more. Um, it's a, I would say a slightly dangerous thing to do. Uh, so when I don't push hard, uh, I don't do this. I, I very much stay on the tarmac. But if I'm pushing hard, like in this case, I'm, I've just passed somebody, I'm trying to push hard to pass the next person or to catch up to the next person and then pass them. I, um, yeah, I, I cut a little bit of the, the, the curb and grass and you just have to make sure you control that oversteer. And if you do it though, it really helps your car rotate. And I can get on the gas early. And then as soon as you get on the gas and straighten out the car here, you have to hit the brakes. And you have to have the brakes pretty hard because you want to be able to get a really good turn in and early throttle onto this straight. 
And this this straight is fairly simple. Um, you just have to try to get a toe if you can. If you don't, then um, you just hold on to the gas. I find that this car doesn't have still doesn't have enough power to really say that. Oh, I can't make this turn. You can uh, make the turn on any part of this track. This this really slight turn and little kink in the straight is pretty good. But once you get to here, I think it's where a lot of passing opportunities are. We're coming back to almost to where we started here already. Um, it's almost a full lap. And this is where most of the passing is done. And this is where you sort of make or break your race. If you can't pass here, if you don't have the top speed, uh, which is why you need the low for the low down for setup. Uh, if you don't have the top speed, you can't pass, then it, it doesn't matter how else you do on the other parts because the other parts you can actually defend quite well. It's quite curved, curvy and uh, tight track. It's hard to pass, but in here is where your passing opportunity is. So if you have low downforce, you have good top speed, then you should be able to pass fairly easily. Um, and then uh, you should also be able to defend quite easily. So let me show you uh, where to go and then I'll show you some passes. So what I do is I go up to this line here so let me see if I can pull forward there are three lines you'll see right here this is my the first line second line and third line the third line is like where the car is right now I break right at the first line if not slightly after so, right so gas 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 I'm already hitting the brakes right here um, I personally like to break early so some people like to break all the way out here um, and go deep into the corner, but I, I prefer not to. I find I get, I lose a lot of time by going too deep into the chicane, because what you want to do is straight line the chicane as much as you possibly can. What you want to do is, if you follow my cursor here, uh, I'm gonna do this. Uh, no, follow my cursor here. What you want to do is go here and straighten out, cut this little curve, and then straighten it out and move here. So you don't want to go too deep because if you go too deep, you basically force yourself to do actually two 90 degree corners. So let's see, let's see me uh, actually do this. So I cut the corner a little bit and I try to stay out of the curb. And why do I stay out of the curb is sometimes it, it can unsettle the car, but if you can actually get on the gas early, it works quite well. And then it's just flat through here. So this lap was, what was that, 115.4. So let's watch it in full speed. Break. So if you're not comfortable with oversteer, like for example, what I'm doing here, uh, you might even want to break a little bit earlier than that because look what I'm doing when I break and then as soon as I get to here I actually start to slightly let go of the brake as I'm staring in so I'm gonna go super slow-mo here because the car is actually drifting uh, slightly and then as soon as it's like sort of being the tail is drifting to the right I swing it back because I steer right, so I swing the tail back to the left. And that helps me make the corners, almost like swing, swing right and then pendulum swing back to the left. And because of that, I don't actually need to apply too much steering lock is how quickly I steer. And because how quickly I steer, it's, it's like a pendulum. It swings back the other way. And as soon as I line up the, the corner exit, I hit the gas. So I'm gonna keep going, moving, moving. So this is, you notice I'm, swinging right and as soon as I hit the gas like now the wheel the, the rear is starting to step out so I actually have to counter steer a bit just to keep it on the road but if you actually get it just right you counter steer and I am this close I'm fully on the curb right so I am this close to being on the grass because if you look at how the car is drifting back, I mean, drifting towards the edge. Um, if you get it slightly wrong, I find that you can actually end up in the barriers. 
So be careful with this one and only if you are comfortable with oversteer, but otherwise break a little bit earlier and just go half throttle through. And then as soon as you see the car finish turning full gas, and then over time you can build a little bit more speed and uh, just work on the line first and then you can build the speed in. So I think I mentioned uh, some passes, right? So which, uh, did I pass this guy? Uh, I did end up passing this guy. So into turn one, you can try and pass, but this one is actually really difficult to pass uh, into turn one because if you screw up on your braking and you're on the inside, you can, you can, you can really screw the guy and you know both of you get taken out of the race. Uh, you also need to watch out for people just cutting in and not leaving you any room and you're you're screwed so you have to really be conservative on turn one i don't think it's a good passing opportunity what i did here was i was significantly faster than this uh 20 car so i just you know gave him some pressure and he, he left me room he was courteous but i think more importantly this turn one why is not why it's not a good passing opportunity is that turn one is a right turn and then we're followed by this blind left right so guess what he's on the inside and if he's on the inside, he's a full car length ahead of me already. And now he is going to take this right hander and he has nowhere to go but to cut back in. I have nowhere to go. I have to slam on the brakes. keep going um what am i doing here and how am i getting this much speed um behind him it's because i took a much tighter turn so you notice i i was actually initially slower here than him he's 75 out uh out of the exit i'm at or maybe around the same but i i'm slower at this point and why why was i able to catch up um all the by the time I get to here is because I actually took a tighter line here. I I made sure I was tight through this left-hander so I can then be smooth on the right. But now he has to take a really sharp right. I bet you he has to lift. Let's listen. Let's listen for it. Uh, let's go to cockpit. He probably has to lift to get to that right corner. Yep, there was a slight lift. It was a very slight lift. And because he did a slight lift, look how close I was able to get to him. And I do my usual braking, get on the gas early, and I have a good run on him. He defends really well though. Now this is another good passing uh, opportunity, a passing, passing uh, location. He defends well, so if you want to defend, get on the inside because on the outside it is almost impossible to pass here unless you're, I guess, crazy or someone who just really got freaked out by you. Uh, but if you're side by side, you can't pass. It's a bank turn, the inside is banked a lot more. They're going to get that much more speed on you. And then if you screw up, you're going to land in the barriers. So if you're on the outside, I would say don't do it, straighten up your car and wait for the long straight. Uh, so what I did was, I, I recognized that. So I, I stayed on the outside and I braked early. I braked really early. So I can get a really good uh, tight turn into the straight. And look what I'm doing. Doing the crossover back on this side. And I'm just so much more faster. Uh, I'm just gonna fast forward for the sake of time and then be able to go and pass. Uh, there was another one, I think, uh, which one was it? I, I don't know, this this race had a lot of passings, so that was fun. I think I passed somebody here. Did I pass someone here? Where did I pass him? Yep, so there, there it is. Uh, there's a pass where I went into that bank turn. Now this time I'm on the inside. So there's that one, um, and then there's, which one is that? I'm going to keep going here, 
Yeah, there's another pass. I think this one it was a the chicane. Nope, no, it wasn't even the chicane. Um, I did a lot of passes this race because I started from the pit lane. Okay, so this one's the classic uh, long straight, right? So it all starts here, all the way out here. So I have, if I want to pass, I must get a good exit out of this corner. So I try to tuck in as tight as possible and wait until the last moment to duck out. I want to stay in that slipstream for as long as possible. So he's hugging that side, so I'm going to go around this side. And at this point, it's a matter of can I outbreak you? I, I think this one made it look a little bit simple because, you know, I think he just braked a lot earlier than I usually do. But um, maybe that Let's see if there's another example. Um, there's, there's that guy. There's this guy. Okay, this, this this pass I really enjoyed. Give me a give me a moment here. So this one, like the other ones, I was just let, let's just watch it in uh, in full speed here. I wanted to go on the inside, but he forced me wide and actually go on the grass. I don't know how I held it together. So, if you look at this, what you needed to make sure you do is you try to get on the inside as much as you can. But what ends up the most important part is I braked much later. I braked here. I think he must have braked somewhere around here. Because look at how far apart he is. There's a full car length all of a sudden. So. So that was a good pass. I was pretty happy with that one. Um, and then finally, let's see, was this? Yeah, this is probably just another one of those um, pass on the straight. Passing on the straight is the best one uh, that you can do. But anyway, uh, let me run through the lap. You know, I think it was lap, what was it, lap nine? I think it was the good lap because I it was the clean lap. Because there are so many laps where I had so much traffic because I was passing people. So I'm just going to show you this lap um, to see how it all sort of fits together. And you can see the sort of staring inputs. I try to straighten out this as much as I can. I, I take a lot of curb. These are very low curves. Take them. Trail break here is so important. Trail break here again, get a good exit. And then um, in here you want to break at the first line or just slightly after the first line, depending on how, comfort how comfortable you are with the brakes. And then there's the line, you brake hard and then you cut the first curb and then get on the gas and hold it and then full throttle through this last corner and that's it for a lap of uh, road Atlanta so if you have any questions let me know give me a thumbs up if you think this is useful and uh, hit subscribe if you're seeing me for the first time I, I hope uh, you stay and see more videos thanks see ya